steels are usually repaired by welding the broken edge and then grinding it to size by rough grinding along the non-working surface and finish grinding along the working surface using the original work surface as a guide to restore the edge. Some trim steels have been undercut and can break in a way that does not leave enough original work surface to use as a guide when finished grinding the repair well. In this case, die makers must resort to a technique called plastic shearing. During plastic shearing, a plastic putty is applied between the broken trim steel and the master steel. When the putty cures, the dies are separated and a perfect indentation of the master trim steel is captured in the putty. The indentation of the master trim is then used to guide the finished grinding on the repair weld. Here is the step-by-step -step procedure for performing a plastic shear. The first step is to remove the mounting bolts and dowel pins from the damaged trim steel and then lift it out of the die. Next, mount the trim steel in a vise and using a die grinder, grind off the damaged area at an angle approximately 45 degrees from the trim steel base. Then take the trim steel to the weld booth, tell the welder what type of metal the trim steel is made out of and ask him to use hard weld filler material. Trim steels are usually made from D2 or W210 water hardened steel or from A2 air hardened steel. The type of metal should be stamped on the base of the trim steel. But if it isn't, you can check to see if other trim steels in the die are stamped or refer to the die engineering drawings. Information about the type of metal is critically important to the welder because welding techniques differ from metal to metal. After the trim steel is welded, place it back in the vise and rough grind the weld. Since the top of the trim steel is a non-working surface, you can rough grind the weld flush with it. Then remove the trim steel from the vise and place it on a surface plate to see if the base is flat. Using your hands, place pressure on opposing corners of the base. You should not detect any rocking motion. If you do detect a rocking motion, it means that the base of the trim steel is uneven and will have to be re-spotted to make it level. Then mount the trim steel back in the die using the original mounting bolts and new dowel pins. You should never use the old dowel pins because the same force that damaged the trim steel in the first place probably damaged the dowels as well. Next, clean the trim steel with denatured alcohol to remove all traces of oil and dirt. And then remove the nitrogen or the springs from the pad. Then coat the master trim steels on the other half of the die with a light oil or other release agent to prevent the plastic putty from sticking to them. And then have a crane operator close the die. Try to keep the half of the die you are repairing on the floor so as to minimize overhead work. Next, evenly position four lamina die separator lifting blocks between the two die halves. If the lifting blocks don't fit between the die halves, you will have to ask the crane operator to open the die so that you can put spacer blocks between the halves. The lamina die separator lifting blocks are used to raise and lower the upper half of the die. Once the lifting blocks are in place, raise the upper die half and remove any spacer blocks that were used. Then, carefully lower the upper die half until the upper and lower trim steels are approximately 1 8 to 1 16th of an inch apart. Then cut off enough plastic putty to cover the length of the welded trim steel and knead it until its color is uniform throughout. Place it along the broken area of the trim steel and work it in so that it fills the gap between the steels. Make sure the putty makes good contact with both steels and allow the plastic putty to cure in place for 10 to 15 minutes. After the putty is cured, 
slowly raise the upper die half with the lamina die separator lifting blocks. Be careful because opening the die too fast may dislodge the plastic from both steels. Then have a crane operator lift off the upper half of the die and remove the trim steel with the putty attached. You are now ready to finish grind the trim steel. So take the trim steel to a flex arm grinder or to a surface grinder if a flex arm grinder isn't available and clamp it to the work table with a C-clamp. Next, place a carbide burr in the flex arm grinder and begin finish grinding the weld. Continue grinding until the weld is flushed with the impression that the master steel made in the plastic. When you are done, run your gloved hand across the surface of the trim steel to check for burrs. Then use a brass hammer to knock off any plastic remaining on the trim steel and then stone the repaired area with a hard white stone to remove small imperfections, restore the surface finish, and restore the trim edge. Be sure to change the direction of your stoning frequently so that you will get a uniform surface. Next, coat the repaired trim steel with layout blue. Mount the trim steel back in the die. Place the lamina die separator lifting blocks on the bottom half of the die and have the crane operator replace the top half of the die. Then use the lamina die separator lifting blocks to lower the die until it reaches bottom. And then lift it off and inspect the repaired trim steel to see if any of the layout blue has rubbed off. Places where the layout blue has been rubbed off indicate high spots that you will have to finish grind and stone again. When the high spots have been removed, place the nitrogen or springs back in the pad, reassemble the die, and return it to service. 